Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome back. You know, for the last two or three days, I've been reassessing my involvement in the flat earth debunking community. When I started this channel back in November of 2018 with 15 subscribers, my goal was to basically correct obvious misinformation that was out there on the flat earth. It started off with, you know, why don't pilots dip their nose when they fly around the curve? And um, that was pretty easy to do. But I've come to the realization that my initial goal of trying to educate flat earthers and provide STEM education for the people looking at flat earth videos was really not quite complete. You see, Providing the STEM education to the people watching Flat Earth videos is still a good thing. It gives them the correct information so that they can make good decisions. However, the people on the Flat Earth don't lack education. They lack the will to obtain education. They don't want to know information that violates or goes against their Flat Earth narrative. And I've spent the last two days trolling the flat earth community to see if this was really true and uh, unfortunately it is and the result is going to be a short series called fun with flurfs now the very first one that we're going to do is to deal with that famous flat earth saying well it, the horizon should drop eight inches per mile squared how many times have we told them that's not the right formula well what's your formula okay what is my formula? Let's see. It would be 2 pi alpha divided by 360 times h cosine alpha divided by 1 minus cosine alpha. There you go. Nothing makes a flurf's eyes glaze over like throwing math that they don't understand at them. So, the very first episode is going to be what's your formula? And we're going to go through the formulas, and the math of the spherical Earth real quick. So I hope you'll enjoy and tune in for the rest of the series. Let's cue up the music and get started. Okay, so let's start off with a couple of things about how we determine the radius of the Earth. Now, originally it was determined by the method of Eratosthenes. And what happened there was the sun's rays came to the Earth in parallel rays. On one day a year, they shone to the bottom of a well in Syene, and in Alexandria, 500 miles away, they formed a shadow on a stick of about 7 degrees, which was 1 50th of the circumference of a circle, giving us about 2,500 miles for the circumference of the Earth. Now, 1,200 years later, an Arab scientist by the name of Al-Biruni wanted to come up with a better way to calculate the circumference of the Earth, and he decided to do it by calculating the radius of the Earth directly. And the way that he did it was he went to the top of a large mountain, over 400 feet high, and he shot a line horizontal from the top of the mountain. And then he measured the angle of the dip to the horizon some distance away. And this was done over the sea to make it more accurate, and it was done many, many times to try and get a very accurate determination of that horizontal dip since it was less than one degree. I did a video not long ago with the main surveyor to show how this was all derived, but this angle of the horizontal drop is the same as the angle formed with the center of the Earth between the mountain and where the horizon was. And he did not know how far away the horizon was. All he knew was this angle. And by using the method Al-Biruni, he was able to calculate the radius of the Earth directly. Now the formula for that is the height of the observer times the cosine of angle alpha, and this is angle alpha, and so is that, over one minus the cosine of angle alpha. And he was able to find the radius of the Earth uh, well within five degrees. And it was more accurate than the method of Eratosthenes. Okay, so how do we know that this is truly the radius of the Earth? 
Well, one of the best ways to tell is to calculate the radius of the Earth using several different methods. So we have the method of Eratosthenes, which is here. And that gave us a circumference of the Earth of approximately 25,000 miles. Now, a variation of that is the use of a sextant, which shows one degree equals 60 nautical miles. And at 360 degrees in a circle, it gives us the same circumference, and as a result, more or less the same radius. Now, a third way that we can do it is by Al Biruni, which is what we just did there. And the fourth way that we can do it is by calculating great circle courses for navigation. And all of these methods result in approximately the same radius for the Earth. So when you have four things coming from different directions and pointing to exactly the same number, that number is probably pretty good. Now what are some other cool things that we can do with this method? Well, first of all, we know that this angle right here, alpha, cuts out the distance from our observation point to the horizon. Okay, so we can take this angle alpha, which is the same thing, and we can take alpha, divide it by 360 times the circumference of the Earth, which is 24,901 miles, and we can come up with a distance from here to the horizon. Now many of you are familiar with this shot of the city of Chicago across Lake Michigan 60 miles from Warren Dunes. But let's go ahead and turn it around. That building on the left, the tall one, is the Willis Tower. It used to be called the Sears Tower and there's an observation deck on the top of it and it's 1450 feet high. Let's go ahead and see what the drop to the horizon would be there and see if we can calculate the radius of the Earth with it. Okay, so here's the setup of our problem. We know that it's 60 miles between Warren Dunes and the Willis Tower. We know the Willis Towers are 1,450 feet high. We know that this angle alpha is 0.6749 degrees. Here's our original setup. Here it is with the cosine turned to numbers. It's 0.99993 and those result in these numbers here. We divide that out. That gives us the number of feet. Then we divide that number of feet by 5,280 feet per mile, and we get an answer of 3,922.89 miles. The correct answer is 3,958.8 miles, or a difference of approximately 36 miles. Here is a theodolite application that you can get on your iPhone and it's reasonably accurate. This particular one was calibrated to the horizon at the seashore. Then it was taken up in an airplane to 45,000 feet and they shot an angle to the horizon as you can see and that angle was 3.8 degrees. So what's the radius of the earth? Okay. So, 45,000 times the cosine of 3.8 degrees over 1 minus the cosine of 3.8 degrees. Here are the numbers. It works out to 44,901 over 0 0.0022. We have the 44,901 over 0 0.0022. Comes up to 20,409,545 feet. Divide that by 5,280 feet per mile and we come up with a radius of the Earth of 3,865.4. And as you can see, that's only about seven miles off the actual radius. So the higher you get, the more accurate it gets. But even going from the Willis Tower, we got it within a day's height. Now the final thing that I want to touch on is how far away is the horizon? And can you estimate it quickly? If you know the drop to the horizon, like 3.8 degrees, if you divide that 
by 360 degrees and multiply that by the known circumference of the Earth, 24,901 miles, we know that we can see to the horizon 262.84 miles. So if you're at 45,000 feet and somebody says that they can see something 1,200 miles away up by Hudson's Bay, you know they're full of nonsense. It's not possible. The most that you can see is 262.84 miles. Well, let's see if you understand this. So I've got two bonus questions for you. Bonus question number one, the International Space Station orbits the Earth at an altitude of approximately 400 kilometers. The radius of the Earth is 6378 kilometers. And the drop to the horizon from the International Space Station is approximately 19.793 degrees. So, how far can you see from the International Space Station? How far is the horizon? And finally, bonus question number two. Jay Tolan Media One is a superstar of the Flat Earth community. He takes these infrared photographs and claims that he can see enormous distances when the haze is removed. One such claim is that he was flying over southern Michigan and claimed that he could see Hudson Bay 1,200 miles away. Now, 1,200 miles into the circumference of the Earth, 24,901 miles, represents 17.349 degrees of the Earth's circumference. How high would he have to be in order to see that far? Well, guys, thanks for stopping by. Now, you've got two bonus questions. The first person that I see that gets each bonus question right could be the same person, could be two different people, but they're going to get a special shout out from me on my next video. So thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan, and we'll see you all soon.